Hello Helsinki, hello world, welcome to Helsinki. My name is René Rohner and I am the chairman of Robert Framework Foundation and I have, to be, I have to, the great honor to welcome here you here to Helsinki to Robocon 2022. Um, this is the first time for me opening this, uh, this great conference and um, I will show you a little bit about the conference and talk a little bit about who um, we as Robert Framework Foundation. So Robert Framework Foundation, we say on our homepage, is a nonprofit consortium that fosters the growth of Robert Framework. It was founded by companies with a common interest to ensure the development of Robert Framework now and in the future. And I would say we have done great so far. Let's see what the future brings, but it doesn't look so dark. So um, we are also always looking forward for other companies, other people to join us in this mission to make that tool greater. It started with seven. At the moment, we are 47. We did quite a good growth in the last years. So these are some of them that has joined us on that way. Not all of them are here because we don't have all logos, but those are the most of them. So if you want to be one of them, please also contact us. Robert Framework Foundation and the worst first step is collecting money, like membership fees from these great companies. And um, you see here the growth of the members, so how much members we get every year. You see it's constantly increasing but then we got a dip somewhere. Everyone knows the pandemic hit us. So all great news from last year that the most participants came, they were basically until April, and then they realized what happens with the pandemic. And let's say someone stepped on the brake, but we are also looking forward to get new members today, maybe tomorrow, maybe you get interested and want to join. We, as said, collect money for the development so that we um, can, can pay the development of Robot Framework and also can pay the ecosystem infrastructure and also fund other projects. You see, still during the pandemic, we made a great jump in uh, our budget. That was due to the fact that we talked with all our members and we made a vote and all decided to just double their fees and just put as twice as much money into Robot Framework because they all liked it so much. So, you know Robot Framework is doing a lot for you. It's doing a lot for your company. It's doing a lot for you to have fun doing your automation. That is not always a fun job, but I think Robot Framework does it best to make it nice and uh, handy. Um, but as JFK once said, ask not what Robot Framework can do for you, ask what you can do for Robot Framework. So how can you ensure that Robot Framework grows in the future, that we have enough money um, to develop it further, that we have enough money to also um, found ecosystem projects, other people with great ideas to open source stuff. You may join the Robot Framework Foundation, talk with your managers, tell them that it's super cheap and they just, just, uh, should, should just contact us. You can participate in Robocon as speaker or as participant because also your ticket uh, helps us developing it. You can buy some merch. We have a brand new merch shop at uh, shop.robotframework.org. Get one of those t-shirts. Uh, basically, these are Robocon on-site exclusive, but we have other very nice shirts on the shop. Um, you can buy the merch outside at the uh, welcome desk where you get these shirts or um, you can get a sponsor of Robocon. Let's recapitulate a little bit what happened last year. So we funded, of course, some robot framework development and PECA managed to get in 2021 uh, six minor releases and two major releases out with 4.0 and 4.1. And we managed to make robot framework a EU, EU and US trademark. We funded three ecosystem projects 
where two of them were completely brand new. It was Sherlock and Roboswack, and Mateusz and also Bartek will, will show us, I think, on the second day um, about these great new tools that get a, a kickstart from us. And we also funded, uh, furthermore, uh, development of browser library so that we uh, could maybe also um, yeah, pay some money for that free time someone is working on it. We made a complete new website launch with the possibility to try out Robot Framework online. What you can also do on our digital venue for the online participants, you can just go to the playground and try the new features Pekka will present about Robot Framework 5 uh, directly there. So let's have a look to the past and how Robot Framework evolved. You see there is quite a big curve going up and Robot Framework is increasing. These are the download numbers from PyPy since 2016. And you see the last years are straight going up. We achieved, by the way, the last two months, so in March and April, two times in a row, more than one million downloads a month, which is also a great achievement. Also, our libraries are getting more and more used and definitely add as one maintainer of uh, Selenium library. Selenium library is definitely the greatest library in Robot Framework regarding the usage. And um, is, is, as you see, more than 50% of all Robot Framework users using Selenium library. The next library in the row is request library. And uh, you also see the SSH library is pretty, pretty common. So a lot of people using web automation, but that also says a lot of people are not. So Robot Framework is super versatile in a wide uh, variety of usage. How 2022 started was basically with the election of a new board, which every year happens. So that was the um, point where I came into charge to kind of guide or lead this uh, board and uh, lead Robot Framework Foundation. We also have uh, great um, board members like Miko Korpela, who uh, sadly cannot be here because he is on a uh, training with some future partners. And we have Tatu Kairi, that's also not here, but we have Katri Ordrin. Katri, are you there? Can you come on stage, please? No, you have to come on stage because otherwise the people online do not see you. Um, we have Mani Kashiria, who is online. Hello, Mani. Nice to see you online. And uh, we have Jani Harpela, please come on stage. And we have Antti Karjalainen. Are you present, Antti? <laughs> Antti is also not here, okay. Maybe he's outside still. Uh, so those, these are just two of these board members. So if you have any questions about Robert Framework Foundation, just grab one of those nice people and ask them. And if you have questions about Robocon, ask me today because I'm on vacation regarding the foundation. So um, we have also a great achievement this year. We have our first employee. So with uh, Mika Solmela, please come on stage. We have our first employee <laughs> as a new executive director. And by the way, you can also buy these nice bags here. And <laughs> so Mika is the one who executes all the stuff. So we are just doing decisions and having smart ideas. And he's the one who has, eating, he has to eat the soup. So thank you, Mika, for all that work. And also thank you, Ahead, for that work for Robocon, because without you, we could definitely not do that. So big applause to Mika <laughs> as employee number zero. OK. Then next, um, we released Robot Framework 5.0 which is also a big step. Some people may have dropped a tier because of dropping off Python 2, but Pekka definitely will uh, explain something about Robot Framework 5 next. So Pekka, please come also on stage. So <laughs> applause for Pekka Clark. Come here in the circle, please. So OK. So now you see some people of, of Robot Framework, but um, there's one very special person of Robot Framework um, we want to talk about. So <laughs> <laughs> that is Ismo Aro. Ismo Aro is, you can, I think, say, the father of the Robot Framework Foundation. 
He had the original idea of this kind of consortium that companies group together, competitors in market, but partners in robot framework. And he managed to groom them together, bring them together to a table, brought that great idea of funding that tool, improving this community, open sourcing everything. And I'm really happy that, that Ismo is also here today, even though he handed over the steering wheel to me in, in January. So Ismo, please come on stage. So let me tell you a little bit about Ismo. Um, I don't tell private stuff because I didn't, his <laughs> didn't get his allowance, but Ismo uh, founded uh, together with others in 2015 this foundation. And um, as I said, he was, he was a former product owner of Robot Framework five years ago, basically. And um, over all these years, um, Ismo was always a person that yeah, didn't, didn't get the, the, the goal out of sight. And we had rough times sometimes, we had hard discussions, uh, and Ismo was always uh, the center of gravity. And we have to thank you really so much. And we have a very small gift that definitely does not uh, balance that. So Ismo... <laughs> there, there is kind of, kind of a backstory, so... Um, you know, I Ismo is, is not the youngest anymore, so um, he, he decided now that he retired from Robert Framework Foundation to buy a Harley. <laughs> so Ismo is now using the summer in Finland, which is basically from um, 20th of July to the 30th of July, uh, <laughs> and drive some bike. So uh, we hope that that helps you. And you can, yeah, found the first motorcycle club, the Robert Framework Motorcycle Club or so of Helsinki. <laughs> okay. Do you want to say something or? Thank you. Uh, it was quite a surprise. And now I know the reason why my wife was measuring me at some <laughs> point of time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and thank you for the kind words. And, but Come a little bit to the front in the light. So, thank you for the kind words, but it's something that, of course, this journey has never done by myself. So, thank you, all the board members, also the community. And I think about the community that this has been growing. Like, I think the first Robocon was the big thing, that it really was turning the boat. And this has been growing and uniting since then. So, that's a big thing. And also, the new board, like my eight-year-old would say, that with the big brains and with the big heart. So, do you have a good time ahead? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Class dismissed. <laughs> okay, let's talk a little bit more about Robot uh, Robocon. Um, as uh, Ismo said, we started with Robocon in 2018. Um, it was a very big risk uh, because that is also kind of an initial invest you have to do with these conferences. And they started quite big. We got really from the stand on 250 participants. And what was really surprising, we got a lot of people from abroad, not from Finland, which was not really expected. And from that point on, Robocon always grows. So we had the next year 310, then 350 participants. And then 2021, we just completely switched to online. And it was even a great success because we easily doubled the participant numbers. So we said we cannot get, um, yeah, let back these, these online participants. So hello world, thank you for being here. We are really happy to see you here. And um, yeah, so we did this hybrid event now. Um, we have definitely over 200 on site again. That's also a great achievement. So for all those sitting here, thank you for coming to Helsinki. Big applause to you. And we have more than 450 people also online. I think st ticket sales is still going on. Uh, so we are um, definitely more than, than last time. Robocon wouldn't be possible without our great sponsors. So these people also invested not small amount of money 
to us just in previous um, yeah, agreement that we will do a good job. We hope we do. And um, special thanks goes to Robocorp for being that platinum sponsor of, of that conference. You will find the sponsors outside or in venue list in our online venue. You can go to the partner room and visit their pages there and see what, what these sponsors are doing with Robot Framework. Another special thanks also goes again as every year here in Helsinki to Sealy for offering their um, offices, their meeting rooms, food and drinks during the workshops, which has been on Tuesday this year. Yesterday we had great time with people on Ethicode's office, uh, with the sprints and sauna, of course. And at Friday evening, there is the great Vala after party, uh, where we definitely will have a lot of fun. And Carla is, of course, reserved again for us. OK. So thank you, these companies as well. Big applause. And now let's come to the next important person. Let me introduce you to Antti Akoniemi. Uh, Antti will be leading you through the next uh, two days and will show you um, or bring you to the speakers and manage you through the day. Um, Antti is an entrepreneur for 15 years now, and he started a um, software development agency called Keysco Labs, where 20 software developers and employees are working at the moment. He was also formerly working with Robot Framework when Robot Framework was very young as a test automation engineer, so he knows quite well what we are doing and what we have done in the last years. And um, Antti, please come on stage. Thank you, Rene. Welcome. Antti is also a stand-up comedian. I'm kind of happy. At the, on, on the pictures, he looks taller. <laughs> but, so it's good that he is a stand-up, but now I go because I think he knows jiu-jitsu. So. Thank you. And, and, and that's the difference. Rene uh, told me that in that photo, I look much, much taller. And that's the difference he, he mentioned. Like, there's other, other things happening in between these photos. Or like, <laughs> I think that was like back then when I was using frame, uh, Robot Framework, like 12 or 15 years ago. But yeah, uh, my name is Antti Akoniem, and also welcome to Robocon on my behalf too. And uh, it's so nice to see actual people in an event. So once more, give yourself a big applause for being here. I think this is awesome to see. Like, big applause for yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, how many of you are from Finland? Please clap. <laughs> and outside Finland? <laughs> Almost 50-50. That's, that's super nice. A uh, few things before we start. So today is sponsored by Robocorp. Uh, thank you to Robocorp. Uh, for you, remember to have fun and meet new people. So during the breaks, Let's meet new people, introduce yourself, and have fun. Uh, also, one thing, uh, we have an online platform. You can find the link in your ticket email. You can ask questions for the speakers in, on, on that online platform. So please do that. We uh, use that uh, for the questions. So go there, ask questions. Um, I think. Next up, we have Pekka Clark uh, talking about the Robot Framework 5.0, what, what new features it has and what is coming after that. So let's give a big warm welcome to Pekka. <laughs> Pekka Clark. Okay, thanks Antti for introductions. Thanks Rene for the first part and most importantly, thanks Ismo for all the work you've done. Thanks everyone for uh, participating. So my name is Pe Pekka Clark. I'm the Robot Framework Creator, and uh, this is my kind of traditional uh, talk about what's new and what's going to happen next. I'll start from Robot Framework, looking at what we've done lately, mainly Robot Framework 5.0, and then talk a bit about future plans. And after that, uh, I'm going to show you what the awesome um, community has done, what kind of changes there are in the ecosystem, new libraries, new tools, enhanced tools, libraries, and so on. 
So yeah, the big thing with Robot Framework itself, Robot Framework Core is of obvious Robot Framework 5.0 with a lot of new syntax. We had a survey when we started we were starting with the development and uh, asking what kind of features people wanted, and there were a lot of uh, people voting for this kind of new syntax features, and we basically decided, okay, let's make this a release where we add a lot of these. Um, we already added if-else structures in Robot Framework 4.0 that was kind of announced or introduced in Robocon last year. And that was the first kind of syntax addition since for loops that were added, I don't know, in very early versions, maybe even before Robot Framework was open sourced. So we had got if else st uh, structures in 4.1, uh, 4.0, and now 5.0 brought us try except structures for kind of handling exceptions, handling errors, while loops to, to well, we already had those for loops, but now we have also while loops. <coughs> we have a new variation of if, if else structures like inline if, which is a bit more compact version, if you only need to execute uh, one keyword or another kind of statement. We are uh, simplifying or streamlining how to return from user keywords by introducing return statement and also loop control is now much more in line how it works with other programming languages with continuum break statements. I'll go, I'm going to <coughs> very quickly show some of the key features here in live and of course then you can very easily test this by installing Robot Framework 5 or trying out that code playground that uh, Rene was mentioning. So here we have the first example is this uh, handling errors using try except structures. This uh, basic syntax is inspired by how, how it works with Python. So we're using like try except uh, finally else branches like Python does. The key, key difference if you are familiar with Python exceptions handling is that with Python you are accepting um, exception instances basically. Well, you're working with those whereas with Robot Framework we are working with error messages. So in this try try block here, we can execute keywords. It can be more than one like I have here. It could be a user keyword that is calling other keywords under, underneath. And if there is an exception when you are running that, if, the, if that thing fails, then we will match the fail error message to these uh, accept um, clauses, basically. And if that error message matches, like it does here, you can <laughs> easily see, then this block, this exit block will execute here. So when I run this, although the uh, try block will fail, the whole thing here succeeds and we got this message on console that error was handled. In the log file, it looks like this. So that um, we have try, that is red because that didn't succeed. There was a failure. And then this ex um, exit block, it was executed. It matched the error and it was executed and then the whole thing succeeded. If I would have some other kind of error like, like this, then it won't be handled. It doesn't match this. It doesn't mat uh, match anything else. And so the try exit structure fails and uh, the whole test fails as well. And in the log file, it now looks like that. It failed and this was not executed. That's why it's here in gray. So that's the kind of basic thing. Uh, what you can also have here, you could have multiple except branches, so matching different kind of accepts and handling them in different ways. This could be actually a pattern, club pattern or regular expression pattern. You just need to configure it. Uh, we could also have alias branches that are executed only if there is no accepts, and then there's a finally branch that you can that is executed always. It's kind of similar thing to teardown in a sense, something where you can handle or uh, do basically clean cleanup activities. The while loop then uh, looks something like this. So, well, like in other kind of languages, we have a condition here, and while the condition is true, this block here is executed. A number is in initialized to 10, and then we log it and um, basically evaluate it so that we decrement it. And when I execute that, we got that locked 10 times. Um, alternative way, of course, with while loops is that you can have something uh, you can break out from them. Exp otherwise, like using break statement, we could, quite common pattern is to have a while through loop that it will execute forever unless we exit there. We could have something like if a uh, number number um, is zero, then we break like this. And the end result should be the same. I can also um, turn this block if here. This is the normal if that was supported in Robot Framework 4. Well, break is new thing here. 
Um, I can turn this to this kind of inline if. It basically means that I have the thing that I want to execute directly on the same row as the if and the condition, then I don't cannot have that end. So it's only one line. So this, is kind of, this is the inline if syntax. And it will work the same way as again. Um, when working with file loops, it's very easy to make mistakes that uh, basically mean that the loop won't, will never terminate. For example, when I was creating this example here to show, I had it in, in initially like this, so that I was decrementing the number but never assigning it again. And as, as you can see, it, 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 this won't end, end very well. So number is 10 and it's going to be 10 forever. Um, except that with robot framework, there's a, a safety thing that uh, if your loop goes basically out of control, it will be terminated. This is a bit controversial feature because some, it's not something other languages are doing. It can, of course, uh, by two if you want to really have a loop that is basically going forever. But the idea is that we really believe that we should be always getting log file out of this and report, and we should don't want that to hang. So that's the reason we have it. There's a limit. Um, you can configure the limit. You can set it to something else like, like this. It was instructed in the error message. So I, I can do limit and say like 100 iterations only, or like, I don't know, two seconds because I can also give it as a timeout. And now it will fail after two seconds. The fail loop will always fail if, if the limit is hit, uh, hit. If you want, you can disable it. So if I do, would do this, set it to none, now there's no limit. And it will. Act, and if I now actually run it, it won't stop un until I close it. So that's roughly how it works. And it was also introducing some of the new, new syntax features there. So plenty of new syntax, uh, 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 they're useful, but of course I still hope that if you have something more complicated, you would do that in Python, because it's still a lot much, lots better and more uh, programming language than robot framework languages. But now if you need to do something like exception handling in robot tests, the syntax is much better than it used to be. There are many other features as well. Um, one thing I particularly like is custom argument conversion. It means basically that you can, um, when creating a library, you can tell robot that when, when there's argument that has a certain type, automatically, automatically convert that before calling your keyword. And you can do a very, uh, you, you can make it data quite uh, nice to users, and also it helps then creating those individual keywords. Also, Libroc was enhanced quite a bit related to type information, also related to custom argument conversion. Uh, we enhanced X unit outputs quite a lot, and uh, as Rene also mentioned, uh, Python 2 is not supported anymore. I'm not sure it can that actually be called uh, enhancement. It's kind of not, but then again, being able to now use Python 3 features in robot framework itself is great. I'm kind of I'm not missing Python 2 at all. I'm kind of missing that we don't support Python anymore because that was one of the key, key success stories when robot framework was uh, started at Nokia that we were able to support Java natively. But well, we just hope that maybe someday there's a Python 3 or something that we could add it support again. Robot Framework 5 was sponsored, as Ren mentioned, by the Robot Framework Foundation. I want to thank the foundation here again. Main developers, there was me and then Janne Harkonen, who has now also been able to work a bit more due to the extra funding from the foundation. So he's kind of a part-time people. I'm, I'm not full-time either, so we don't have that much money. <laughs> we basically, I, th I think the foundation would basically have now nearly kind of money for one full-time people, but we've been splitting it with two, so easier that way. But also we got a lot of contributors by the wider open source community, which is Totally awesome. So what we are going to do next, um, we are, have already kind of started starting work with this a little uh, robot framework 5.1. It's going to be released June or may, may, maybe more realistically July. So somewhat smallest feature, uh, sorry, release, where the key thing, the most important thing is going to be start of localization efforts. We want to make robot framework more suited, uh, better, to, better, easier to use in in countries where English is not the native language. Well, what we are going to start with is that we want to localize markers used in test data files, like headers, like, and uh, so that instead of having, having test cases there as a header, I could in Finland write test, test it or something like that. Uh, instead, and also settings, so that instead of like documentation and libraries, uh, documentation and library, I could have something like documentation and maybe kirjasto, I don't know. 
Um, this won't be too, tech too hard to implement technically. Luckily, our new parser is pretty good, and it's, uh, we already looked at it. It's not going to be too challenging. But the hard part is then coming up with good, good uh, terms in different languages. And uh, that's definitely something where we, then we are going to need community help. So if you are from some of the language, non, uh, uh, a non-English speaker, and you want Robot Framework to support your language, maybe kind of try to form a group of people and come up with good terms. But we'll, we'll get back to that. If you're interested in this, so you can contact me here during the conference. In addition to those markers, we're also going to localize given when then prefixes used in behavior driven development. That's the second oldest issue in the issue tracker. It was submitted already in 2020, uh, 2010, I think, 12 years ago. Um, and it's great that we finally got it closed. Incidentally, also the oldest issue, which is like three months older than it was submitted already in 2009, uh, is going to be uh, fixed most likely because there was interest towards that, which is basically private user keywords uh, in, the, in the sprints, and we got it mostly done already yesterday, so looking good. Awesome kind of to see, <laughs> be able to finally close ancient issues like that. Um, another kind of big thing in this release, hopefully, the, if we have time, localization is the key, absolute key thing, is that we may want to make it uh, APIs for library, library keywords to run other keywords better. After 5.1, then we are going to continue with six, five, uh, Robot Framework 6 or 5.2. It kind of depends on the final situation with the foundation, and uh, well, there's going to be some holidays and so on. But next autumn, we are going to start with something after 5.1 as well. So now, um, ecosystem. What's new in the ecosystem and what's enhanced? I asked about this um, in Slack and in forum and LinkedIn and everywhere a little time ago. And uh, there were more kind of answers than I expected. So I couldn't fit everything in a single, a single slide as I was earlier able to do. So I have plenty. Um, I start from editors, linters, and things like that. Basically, this uh, MOE is there to try to mean so that that sparkle thing is the new thing and the uh, uh, rocket is enhanced and then bubble means that there's actually going to be a talk here in the, at the conference about this topic. So the language server provides plugin, uh, language server protocol based plugins for VS Code and PyCharm was uh, introduced here in Robocon last year uh, by Fabio and has been enhanced heavily over the last year and I expect Antti to talk about that in his presentation, because that's a Robocorp uh, sponsored project. We also have new kind of uh, LSP based plugin that's only for VS Code and it's called uh, Robot Code. It's a slightly different take on it. So if you are using VS Code, you have a possibility to test this and see which fits your style better. Right, the, like the original editor for Robot Framework that was developed back in the day by the team working for Nokia has also been getting some enhancement. I got uh, Helia, who is nowadays the um, maintainer, all that he's been working with Ride 2 and has had some kind of beta releases out, which is, of course, awesome as well. Uh, Jupyter Lite kernel. Um, Jupyter basically is a notebook where you can write Python code or also robot code using these uh, dedicated kernels, and uh, you can write them and run them and so on. And uh, Jupyter Lite is basically Jupyter running on a browser, if I've understood it correctly. And if I haven't understood this correctly, the correct thing is that Asko and Nick are going to talk about this here in the conference. They also have had earlier a talk about uh, Jupyter kernel, the normal Jupyter kernel. Robot Tidy, Robocop um, tools uh, were also introduced last year. Uh, Robot Tidy is a tool for cleaning up your data. Robocop is a linter, so it's looking for kind of uh, problems in your uh, data. And uh, both have been enhanced quite a lot over, the, uh, over the, this last year. And there's going to be lightning talks explaining what they've been doing lately, so I don't need to get into details here. Then there's this tool called Sherlock that also was mentioned by Rene, because that's one of the tools that the foundation has been sponsoring. And um, it's uh, my understanding, of, uh, again, this, there's going to be a talk about this, so I don't need to know too much of it yet, but my understanding is kind of a similar idea as, as in Robocop, but it's much more thorough. It's also looking for kind of uh, uh, unused code and uh, con co looking for code complexity and stuff like that. So looking forward for, the, for that talk. Plenty of new libraries and enhanced libraries. Well, browser is not new anymore. It has been enhanced, was also sponsored by the foundation, as Rene told. 
Uh, so it's play rock based web automation library. We'll hear um, uh, like uh, latest news in the browser world here. That's going to be a talk about that. Eggplant library is a tool for, uh, that uses Eggplant, which is a commercial image automation tool internally. There's going to be a presentation about that. It's a new one. Kamunda library is already older. Oh, well, it's, I guess it's not old, but it's, been, it's not uh, new in last year, but it's been enhanced. And Marcus is going to have a lightning talk about that. What's the late, latest in cha uh, changes there? Uh, Kamunda is, uh, well, some Marcus is going to explain it better, but it's, kind of kind of wor it's workflow automation framework, basically. RPA framework, which is a collection of libraries and tools for RPA, has been enhanced. It's another Robocorp project, basically, and I assume Antti is going to talk more about that in his presentation. Something that I'm personally really, really happy about is this REST instance library is now maintained again. It's a really cool, good library for REST API testing. It was introduced in Robo the first Robocon in 2018. It was some time without, uh, without uh, active maintainer, but now it's maintained again. And that is great news. A lot of other enhancement in this uh, um, REST API world as well. There's a uh, robot ABI driver and robot ABI libcore that are kind of that's kind of tooling for uh, creating libraries for REST API testing. If I've understood it correctly, and then there's also RobotSwag, which is a kind of similar kind of tool. Uh, it's basically for the same purpose, but uh, I don't know basically anything out of, out of this, and I'm looking forward for the presentation that we are going to hear about both of them. So plenty of stuff happening in that REST API uh, testing, or REST API automation domain. And then there's a Perfman library. Uh, it's a, a library for collecting Windows Perfman statistics using Perfman tool. New addition. I'm sure this is not kind of exhaustive list. I'm, I'm sure that there are other libraries that ha are new, and also I'm sure there are other libraries that have gotten enhanced. Like I'm, I'm sure there has been some Selenium library development and so on, but these are kind of the major things. Uh, but that wasn't all. <laughs> it wasn't only like those editors and libraries. We also have other tools. Uh, Eros Farm, which is a performance testing tool, basically makes, the makes it possible to use robot frameworks of performance and load testing has been enhanced. It's developed by the same person who, was who has created that uh, performance library mentioned on the earlier page. Robot MK, which is a plugin for Czech MK, which is IT infrastructure monitoring tool, has been enhanced quite a lot as well. RCC, which is a tool for handling uh, automation environments, uh, apparently mainly for RPA, but I guess it can be used in testing. Another Robocorp thing, and I'm sure Ant is going to talk about that, so I don't need to do it. I don't need to try to explain what it does. He will do it better. Uh, Jenkins plugin has been enhanced to support Robot Framework 4 and Robot Framework 5 features, which of good good as keep, keeping update. Uh, code playground that Renan mentioned, which might be something I want to show at some point. I don't have no time for that. Uh, it's basically a web-based editor where you can play with Robot Framework, try out different features, and so on. It's a new thing and awesome. It's basically live on robotframework.org pages. Um, Robot Reporter is a new thing, a uh, plugin for GitHub Actions to, to publish Robot Framework results if you are running, running Robot Framework on GitHub Actions. And we are running Robot Framework itself there, and I'm looking forward to talk about this to learn could we actually use that. That sounds very interesting. Reactive robot is uh, something that, if I again understood it correctly, and again there's a talk about this, so if I didn't understand correctly, I will be corrected later. Um, may, that can trigger robot execution runs using message queues. Robot Stack Tracer basically provides more information about errors on console, if you use that, and that's a pretty cool thing, and I hope we can in incorporate something like that to the core at some point. And uh, the last thing, this I not this I know particle order, but last one here is oxygen, uh, which uh, apparently is a tool for converting results from other automation tools into robot framework format, so that you can then use the robot framework tooling to work with them. And there's going to be a talk about that as well. So yeah, I was expecting to have a slide full of uh, tools and libraries in the ecosystem, but I ended up having three, and <laughs> which I even quite full. So. I'm really happy. To, uh, thanks for the awesome community, for all the new, new additions, all the enhancement to the ecosystem. That was all I wanted, uh, had to say. So thanks for participating here. There's time for questions, but it's actually not now. We are still going to have Ed here talking about community. And after Ed is done, then it's time for questions for me and Rene and uh, Ed as well. So welcome, Ed, and thanks here.
<laughs> Welcome. Um, I must say it's, it's terribly exciting to be back in Finland. Um, I greatly missed coming out, seeing you all here in this wonderful city, um, which is absolutely wonderful to come. Um, for those online, I'm going to might have a mic issue here, but um, for those online, the uh, difference between Robocon in the past several years is that it comes in January. Pardon me. Yeah, if you get that. Thank you. Sorry about that. So um, we've generally we've been in January, and Helsinki in January is absolutely beautiful. It's filled with snow. Um, it is not filled with sun. Um, and so I have been absolutely kind of a little bit disoriented, but very, very happy because it's been absolutely beautiful here. Um, and so it's, it's great to be back in Helsinki. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about ourselves as a community. Um, and so I've had a chance to talk about us as a community over the past several years and wanted to go ahead and give you kind of a specific two sets of words. Um, to think about during this conference. Um, I was trying to come up with how do I want to frame this discussion, right? How do I want to kind of lead us through here? And I was kind of trying to get some big picture ideas um, and was going through and, and, and was having a tough time struggling with that. And I'll tell you what ones I come up with. But there's another thing that I want you to think about. And it's the idea of giving and taking. Um, right? Giving and sharing. So one of the things that you might have seen um, is a lot of where we are growing as a community. Um, Pekka just went through a whole lot of different parts that are contributed by the community, right? Um, Renee was talking about the foundation. Where's the foundation been? How has the foundation been growing? So giving and taking. So everybody, if you could, just for a second, say that quietly to yourselves, right? What can I give and what do I need to take? That second word is actually very interesting. When I think about that second word, taking, um, I want to be clear in how I talk about it. Um, one of the things is the, the concern about, you know, I take something. Sometimes I don't want to dwell on it, but we are coming out of the pandemic, and the pandemic took a great deal away from us, um, a tremendous amount. But when I think about taking, and what I'm talking about and focusing today is not in a negative sense. Um, I only want to think about it on the positive end, right? What do I need? We as a community are growing. And if you think about yourself as an individual growing, what do you need when you're growing, right? What do you need as you're growing in your usage of robot framework? Part of that's education, right? How do I level up? How do I increase my skills? Um, so one of the things that you need is that, education. Um, there's a group we talk a lot on our community channel. So we've got our community Slack channel. And so one of the areas there is um, education. And we as a foundation, we as a community are, and we as leaders in the community are looking at how do we help people grow in their robot framework knowledge. This conference is a perfect example of that, right? What do you need? So I ask you while you're here or while you're online to think about what is it that you need to grow, right? Where's the next level? Because as you're growing, we all grow. And that's the other aspect of it, right? So the give. One, one of the things I ask um, everybody to do is to think about not only growing yourself, but how do you grow those around you? Um, very simple way of thinking about this and very simple thing to do is I come onto the Slack channel. So we have a community Slack channel. If you go out to robotframework.org, there's a community Slack channel, wonderful place for everybody to come in. Come in, I ask a question. So one of the things I encourage everybody to do is come ask a question, grow, 
But if you ask a question, I ask you to also give an answer. Um, Think about where you can give an answer. One of the things that I encourage you also to do is look for the gaps. Um, I was reminded of, of, I I usually, when I come out to Helsinki, I'm reminded I usually come through London. And in London, on the subway, they have a wonderful um, signs everywhere that says, mind the gaps, because they don't want you to step between the platform and the, the car. So mind the gaps. Where are our gaps? Um, each of you is an expert. Um, and I know you might kind of might question that, but I'm telling you, each of you are an expert. Each of you has this skill set. And with you bringing into the community, you're growing yourself, you're growing those around you, and we all grow together. And this is actually very important to do. So um, I will leave you with that. Just this idea of, of, of growing. I want to jump into one other th- area. Um, one of the things that we do is, um, and we've kind of done it past several years, we kind of take a step and, and look at where are we all at um, and where are we growing. So here's a, a list of um, visitors from a couple of different sites. One for the conference here, we see a lot of different uh, places around from the conference. Um, we see some very familiar faces. We have a very large presence in Finland. Um, we've got a large presence in India and the United States. Um, we've also had a uh, large presence in Germany. Those are kind of where our core, if you look back in the history of Robot Framework, that's some of where our core users have come from. But if you also look at Robot Framework, we start to see where there's growth. Um, we see growth in areas like in Brazil, There is a very large community out in Brazil, so I welcome you all um, if you're watching from Brazil. We've got growth within Brazil. We've got growth within China and Thailand um, and in France. And so we're growing as a community. We're growing as an international community. And then if we look at participants, so we've got a couple of slides here. Um, where everybody is. So one of the things we like to do is, um, I know Auntie did a little bit. Could I have everybody um, here in the auditorium, and, and if you want to do this online, you can do Everybody stand up for a second, please. All right. Everybody not from Finland, please sit down. All right. I will, I will try to avoid my, my finish. Um, it's always fun, I say. All right, everybody from um, the greater Helsinki area, if you could sit down. So for those online that you won't be able to see, we've had first about half the crowd sat down when we, so we're about half from Finland. Um, half of us are not from Finland. Um, and then we've got a lot of people from the Helsinki area right here. Actually, a whole lot of people from the Helsinki area. Um, which is really good, because then I don't have to try to pronounce Olu, Torku. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of laughter. Um, I'm not even going to try the university town. So all right, thank you very much. We'll have, we'll have everybody that's done. Um, how about? Uh, People from Germany, our, our friends from Germany, if everybody from Germany could please stand up. Welcome. Welcome to Robocon. All right, great to have you here. How about the Netherlands? Welcome. And one of the things I encourage everybody to do is look around and see who else is here. You might not know some of these other people, so it's always great to, to, to see. So we can build community here, and then we build community when we're back home again. Um, Slovenia, and I pardon me if I pronounce Slovenia wrong. Welcome. All right, how about people from the United States? <laughs> we're all still asleep. We're about seven hours behind, so we're all asleep. Um, Sweden. Yes, <laughs> they're, they're like the Americans, we're a little asleep. All right, um, 
And then online, if we look at, at who we've got online, we've got people from Finland. We've got a large group online from Finland. Germany, the United States, Poland, Netherlands, and India. We welcome you all here. All right, so why don't we uh, open up to questions? Yes, and uh, let's welcome uh, Pekka and Rene also on stage. So we have a few questions. Um, if I would have a feature request, what would be the way to get it implemented? Can I pay for the development? I would hand over that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you can pay if it's developed. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, first of all, I can, it would depend on what tool it, or library it is. If it's for a term core, is it for something else? I mean, that, that kind of depends. We cannot dictate. I cannot dictate, or foundation cannot dictate what the, uh, individual tools, uh, libraries are uh, in the ecosystem working. But with robot term core, uh, um, you can pay for the development. There are some of the features, like bigger features, have been sponsored separately uh, in the past. For example, Robot Framework Parser was uh, re-implemented already like several years ago, and that was there was a separate sponsorship by foundation companies for that, and that has been awesome because that's kind of basically that's the thing behind these LSP-based plugins, and that's the thing behind being able to add new syntax to the framework and so on. So that's then, but. Uh, if if robot for robot framework core, it still needs to make s make sense in the in the context of the framework. We are not going to accept just that if you pay and it will be stupid feature. We won't we won't go into that. Or at least you need to pay a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for stupid features you have to pay extra. Then. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, well, uh, most likely we just won't be accepting them. But I mean, of, of course. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's. What, what what would be the way? So contact you on Slack, making a GitHub issue. Yeah, the first should be. Um, now, now I'm only talking about robot framework core, but the first basically should be an issue, and we should basically decide, discuss that does it make sense, how it should work, so on. And then, if it's kind of important, we can also do it on the foundation kind of sponsorship. If we see that okay, that's valuable for the whole community, and there's nothing more that this would be kind of more important right now, it can be done. But if we see that okay, that's nice, but not really actually, actually something you want to work right now, then the question might be that you can pay. And there's so you can pay the foundation, and then the foundation fi will find people can pay me or someone else perhaps. Uh, you can pay depending on the case. It might be also possible to pay directly for me with no money not going through the foundation, or you can pay someone totally different that is going to create the pull request, and then we are going to review the pull. Yeah, request. we had, for it, example, in 4.0, yeah. we had uh, Robocorp, ha Robocorp has paid uh, Janne Harkonnen and, and Mikko yeah. Korpela to, so, to contribute. So it's there are many many different ways, but it's definitely possible. But I have, to have the issue first, then we discuss, and we see how, what, how it goes. Yeah, I was going to say there's also the ability with the API, you know, some features can actually be developed on the side. I know there was, I can't remember what it was, but developed without having to change the core, but developed on the side using the API yeah. and demonstrate. Yeah. The data yeah. driver started by, by asking Pekka, hey, it would be nice to have data-driven testing improved in the core, and then he came up with the ideas of the API. And yeah. that can be done by, by uh, multiple yeah. developers in the community. Yeah. yeah, that's true. So if, the, if there's a feature that we will see that, okay, that would be nice to have, kind of, but we are not, it could be that, okay, it's not exactly something that doesn't necessarily belong to the core. And with the data driver, actually, that wasn't the main issue. With the data driver, the main problem was that it was so complicated to design how it should actually work. And the, even if you start adding features to robot framework code, that we have all the, con the backwards compatibility and everything, and it was at this data driver back then, it was much easier to start a new project. So that's one thing that can also happen that we just enhance some existing API so that that thing could be a new tool in the awesome ecosystem that we have. I think the next question is also for Pekka. Do we have any risk if we upgrade to 5.0? Any risk? There's always a risk. There's a very fitting uh, XKCD comic about this. <laughs> Someone can try to find it and put it in. There's about like a, well, I don't know. Anyway. So <laughs> there's a, a, and there's also there's actually a thing called Hyman's law about this. Any time, every time, or Hiram's law. Uh, any time that you say change something, it's it can break something. Basically, we can have an API and people should use that. But basically, the real API is anything that is the whole code. We, if we especially because it's Python, there's we cannot prevent people from using it. So there's a risk. 
but it should be relatively small. You, can, you should ch take a look at first uh, release notes, what they at least did there as backwards incompatible changes. I don't think there were that many in this release, actually. And then just try it out. Don't try it in yeah. production necessarily first. And so I mean, test you, it. You, you can try the test, let your suite run with the same software with 4.0 and then try yeah. with 5.0 and see what happens. Yeah, especially in test automation, I would say that because you are testing your thing and it's not otherwise ready, you should, it should be safe for you to switch dependencies and see how it works. And if it goes bad, then well, re revert back. Yeah, you're more smart afterwards. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next question, has the foundation identified some gaps in terms of supported testing tools or other pieces in the ecosystem? Are there plans to start something completely new? At the moment, I would say not. Um, of course, we have, we have identified new, new stuff. Uh, we, have, we, have, we are talking also with the community members or with the foundation members in discussions. RPA is a, is a big development field, definitely for us, uh, which is also growing uh, massively. But none of the things we have seen um, causes any kind of discussion of doing something completely new. So, um, yes, we, we, we look the market, but uh, we are not the something else foundation. So at the moment, we, we stick to robot framework, and that's our goal. And um, the point is we, we, we see so much growth and so much usage in, in robot framework, there's no need to directly do add something completely new. Yeah. What we've it, I guess it's something more like that comes from uh, organically from the, from the community. If community needs something, they can start developing something. And if there's someone who, who's very interested, you know, I would like to do this, but my I don't have an employer who would pay for me, or I, I cannot do it, then it's possible to ask, for example, for the founders, and would founders be able to sponsor. We are going to have sponsorship round, hopefully, next autumn again. Hopefully, yeah. But you can then things like that. Uh, I guess it goes more like that, not the foundations in the get we and we need to go yeah, there. Yeah, typically we are just supporters in ideas and not inventors of them. So we as board or foundation members, maybe someone from us has a good idea, but then the person acts as part of the community. So yeah. it's it's not like the foundation dictates any kind of features. We discuss it as kind equals, as expert in robot framework. Some of us, some more, some uh, some less. And then basically the community decides what to do. And that's also one goal from us. So it's not like big company A wants a big feature and pays a lot of, a lot of money. And then we say, OK, we do because they pay. We consider it. And then we ask in the community if that is a good idea or not. And if they say that's a dumb idea, then we won't do it, yeah. even if you pay. Actually, but we take the money. Actually, there's no <laughs> <laughs> um, actually now. That was about features, but actually what we have realized is we are lacking good uh, introduction material. That's something we yeah. have actually realized. So yeah. that's something we are work with the founda uh, foundation is uh, sponsoring yeah. and the community is working with better introduction material. Not a feature, not a new tool, but just material to get people started. Because the, one of the problem with fl flexible framework, with the awesome big ecosystem like robot framework, is that if you come there and don't have an earlier experience, you don't necessarily have earlier automation experience as, as well, Knowing how to start, where to start is very, very hard. So, so that's, are, that's something that's the ongoing projects of, of this. So year, that's something like we realized. Community education, maybe doing certificates and something yeah. else. Yeah. Uh, quickly, one actually, this is titled opinion. Would help if library descriptions also have examples where even eventual document that. Uh, Keywords operate on are included in examples. I think this is pretty much the introduction or intro thing. And yeah, think, and it's also for each library developer. Yeah, maybe uh, also a, a good practice how to how to write your library documentation, including mm -hmm. examples. Yeah, that's yeah. I think it would help. But that and that's also something, of course, where if you are bothered some library not having a good intro thing, then you can submit an issue there about that. And if you are very really clever, you are going to sub when you figure out how it works, you create an example and create a pull request. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's how the open source stuff works. So maybe it will be in, in house. But that's a good point for library developers to have better examples already in the intro. Exactly. Uh, hey, give thanks, a big welcome, <laughs> big, big thanks to Pekka, Rene and Ed. Uh, next up, we have the break, so we'll continue 10.25. So 10.25 here, we'll continue. Thank you for the first part of the day. Have fun. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Be done.